Hi, welcome to Algebra 2 Common Core. Today we're going to expand our knowledge of exponential functions by finding equations when given ordered pairs that must satisfy the equation. Sometimes we'll be given the ordered pairs in a table of values, sometimes on a graph, sometimes just as a list of ordered pairs. So in exercise number one, it introduces us to an exponential function. We'll see that our exponential functions are generally of the form that we have been seeing in this section, in this chapter. f of x equals a times b to the x power. It's going to be really important in this unit that we understand what the parts of this exponential function stand for. So we'll be looking at the a, the b, and the x. The x, of course, is our input. The f of x is the output. Let's go ahead and examine the table of values that we, are be, that we are given and see if we can notice anything. First of all, we see that the first ordered pair is 0, 5. When the input is 0, the output is 5. That point, of course, stands for our y-intercept. When we look at the rest of the table, we notice that Every time the input goes up by 1, the output gets multiplied by the same number. And that multiplier, in this case, is 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45. 45 times 3 is 135. That's going to help us in identifying what the equation for this exponential function is. Again, you'll notice that this is an exponential function rather than a linear function. A linear function, my y values would have to go up by the same amount. I would have to add or subtract the same amount each time if it were linear. But when it's exponential, I see that I multiply my f of x to get the next f of x value. So when I look at this table, I'm going to start with my function value at 0. So f of 0 will go into this equation as a times b to the 0 power. But we all know that b to the 0 power is just equal to 1, so that tells me that I have that f of 0 is equal to a times 1, which is just a. f of 0 in this table is equal to 5. So that tells me that my a value must be 5. Remember that in an exponential function, the a is always going to be equal to the y-intercept, or the function value when the input is equal to 0. Now it's going to be uh, important for us to then figure out my b value. b is going to tell me my multiplier. You'll notice that the b is being raised to the x power, so as I go up by 1 every time in the x, I should multiply by another factor of b. So in this case, we said that our multiplier was 3, so I know that my b value is equal to 3. So the final equation for this function should be f of x is equal to a, which is 5, times 3 to the x power. Now again, remember with exponential functions, we would never, ever, ever multiply the 5 times the 3 because 3 is being raised to the exponent of x. So for our explanation here, we see that this function is an exponential growth function because my base is a number bigger than 1. It's important from the last lesson that we recognize that. And we said that Every time the input increased by 1, the output was multiplied by 3. So this is a good example showing us how the a and the b work in an exponential function. We can, of course, go to our graphing calculator 
and I would encourage you to pause the video for a minute now, go get your calculator, and in your calculator please enter the function y equals 5 times 3 to the x. If you look at the table of values, you should see these ordered pairs. So at 0, my function value is 5, at 1, it's 15, at 2, it's 45, and at 3, it's 135. So go ahead and do that on your calculator and check it. Now in exercise number 2, we also want to find an exponential equation, f of x equals a times b to the x. This time I'm given two ordered pairs. When the input is 0, the output is 8. That's the same thing as saying when x is 0, y is 8. The second point, when x is 3, y is 1,000. So it might be helpful for you to write it as ordered pairs. Now remember what we said on the last exercise. Whenever we know the y-intercept, so f of 0 equals 8, is actually our y-intercept. So our y-intercept always tells us our a value. So in this case, we know that a is equal to 8. And again, you can think about that as your function value at 0 is equal to a times b to the 0. But b to the 0 is just equal to 1. So f of 0 is equal to a. And in this case, a must be 8. Now let's go to part b here and set up an equation. So if we know that f of x is equal to a times b to the x, but we already know that a is equal to 8, I'm going to say 8 times, oops, wrote that wrong, 8 times b to the x power. So I'm going to use my ordered pair of 3 comma 1,000. I'm going to use the input of 3 for x and the output of 1,000 for f of x. So I get this equation, 1,000 equals 8 times b to the third power. In part c, we want to go ahead and solve that equation for the b value. So if we have 1,000 is equal to 8b to the third, to solve this equation, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 8. So we get on the left side, 125 equals b to the third. Now we would, of course, think of this as then taking the cube root of b on the right side. And if I take the cube root on the right side, I also take the cube root on the left side. I'm going to also show this as an exponential equation like we did a couple lessons ago. So if I raise both sides to the reciprocal exponent, that's one-third. So that gives me b to the first is equal to 125 to the one-third. But that, of course, is the cube root of 125. So no matter how we think about it, I end up taking the cube root of 125, which is 5. On my calculator, I could just do the exponential, 125 raised to the one-third exponent using the caret key on my calculator. My other option is to go into the math menu and do the cube root of 125. I think that's also a number that most of us would recognize as a perfect cube. Now that we have our a and our b value, we can go back and find our equation. So f of x must be equal to 8 times 5 to the x power. And again, you'll notice that the 8 stands for the y-intercept. The 5 stands for the multiplier. Now, since that multiplier, since that b value is greater than 1, that tells me that, again, I have exponential growth for this function. Now in part D, we want to find the value of f of 2. So to find f of 2, we just want the output when the input is 2. And again, remember, do your exponents first. So this means 8 times 25. 8 times 25 is, of course, 200. So I have f of 2 is equal to 200. Look over that example and make sure that all the parts make sense to you to find the A value and the B value. 
In exercise number three, we're again given that we have an exponential function and we've got two ordered pairs. So the first one, f of 4 equals 3, tells me that I have the ordered pair 4 comma 3. And for the second ordered pair, 6 comma 48. Now this time we're not given the y-intercept, so it's more difficult to find our a value. But the question is actually asking us for the value of the base. So I'm going to bypass the part about the a, and let's see if we can figure out our base value first. I might set this up as a table of values and see if we can look for that multiplier, which of course is our b value. So my x, my input, my f of x, my output. I know that at 4, my output is 3. I don't have my answer at 5, but I do have the output at 6, and that is 48. So I see that in this case, my input goes up by 2. My output, I have to multiply by b here, and multiply by b here as well. So when I do this, I see that when I multiply by b twice, 3 times b to the second is actually equal to 48. That 2 as the exponent on the b makes sense because I saw that my input went up by 2. Now if I divide both sides of the equation by 3, that tells me that b squared must be equal to 16. So my b value, taking the square root on both sides, must be equal to 4. And if I think about that, 3 times 4 would give me a 12 here. 12 times 4 would give me 48. So it makes sense that my multiplier must be 4. You'll see that this is choice number 4 in the multiple choice question. In the first three exercises, we saw that we had nice numbers for our a and our b. They always turned out to be nice whole numbers, but that's not always the case with exponential functions. So for the next three exercises, we're going to take a look at when we're given points where the a and the b may not turn out to be whole numbers. Again, in exercise number four, I'm finding an exponential function. I have to be given two ordered pairs in order to find the a and the b. We are setting up a system of equations, this time with exponential functions. You'll remember back in unit number two, we did systems of linear equations. But in this unit, we are looking at systems of exponential equations. So I want to make my equation in the form of y equals a times b to the x. My two ordered pairs this time, if I have a y value of 36, that occurred when the x value was equal to 2. So I'm going to make my equation leaving the a and the b in the equation because I don't know the values of a and b. For the second one, I've got 121.5 as the y value. Again, I don't know the a and the b, but I do know that the input, the exponent, was 5. Now, the way that we're going to solve for a and b this time is actually using the method of division. That's different than when we had linear equations and we added equations together. I'm going to start by putting the second equation on top because its, its exponent was larger. I'm going to put the first equation on the bottom because its exponent was smaller. And what I'm going to do is divide the top equation by the bottom equation. Now when I do that, I'll use my calculator to divide the numbers on the left side. Dividing, I get 3.375. Now, here's the very interesting part of this. When I divide a by a, a divided by a is just equal to 1, so the a cancels out of this equation. But when I divide the b's, I know the dividing exponentials means that I'm going to subtract my exponents. So this gives me b to the 5 minus 2, which is b to the third power. 
So I'm going to take that equation, 3.375 equals b to the third, and you can think of it either as taking the cube root on both sides, or you can think of it as raising to the one-third power, which means exactly the same thing as taking the cube root. So when I do that, I get that b is equal to, I'm using my calculator, 3.375 raised to the one-third, or take the cube root of 3.375, and I get that b is equal to 1.5. Well, just like with linear equations, if I have found my b, I can go back to one of my original equations, and it doesn't matter which one I use because they will both work. I'm going to use the, the easier one, the one that has smaller numbers. So 36 is equal to a times 1.5 to the second power. Notice that I've substituted 1.5 in for b. 1.5 to the second power is 2.25, and that's being multiplied by a, and I'm going to set it equal to 36. Dividing both sides of the equation by 2.25, I get that a turns out to be 16. So our goal is to identify the a and the b in my exponential equation. So that gives me that the exponential equation is y equals 16 times 1.5 to the x power. You could also write that 1.5 to the x in parentheses if you prefer. Again, I'm going to point out a really important thing about exponentials. Since the b is greater than 1, this tells me that this equation represents an exponential growth function. That answer makes sense because as my x value increased, my y value increased by multiplying. So here is my final answer for my exponential function. In exercise number five, you'll notice that you're given a graph of an exponential function. And we want to write our equation y equals a times b to the x. We are given two ordered pairs. This ordered pair, negative 2, positive 128, falls right here on my graph. And positive 2, 1 half, falls over here. Think about this function for a minute and decide whether we have exponential growth or exponential decay. In our final answer, we should be able to see that the answer matches whether we have exponential growth or decay. So I'm going to use my two ordered pairs and I'm going to set up my equation. Now, it doesn't matter in this case which one I'm putting on the top and which one I'm putting on the bottom. I think I might start with the one on the left. So 128 is my output is equal to a times b to the negative 2 power. The other ordered pair, the y coordinate of 1 half, is equal to a times b to the second power. Now the next step here, after I do the substitution, I might even write this in here, so substitute x and y to make a system. of exponential equations. Going to step number two, I'm going to divide and I always divide one equation by the other. In this case, it doesn't matter which way I divide, so I'm going to divide the top equation by the bottom equation. 128 divided by 1 half gives me 256. Remember that dividing means the same as multiply by the reciprocal. So 128 divided by 1 half is the same as 128 times 2. Now when I divide the a's, a divided by a is 1. For the b's, I need to subtract the exponents, but make sure you're subtracting top exponent minus bottom exponent. So negative 2 minus 2 gives me negative 4. Well, this is an exponential equation with a negative exponent. 
I could really just raise both sides to the reciprocal exponent to solve it. So the reciprocal exponent, negative one-fourth power. That gives me b to the first, and this would be the same thing as, because I've got a negative exponent, I'm going to move my 256 to the denominator, but then the one-fourth tells me that I'm taking the fourth root. I could also, on my calculator, do 256 raised to the negative one-fourth using the caret key. What I get here is that b is equal to 1 over 4. So my base turns out to be 1 fourth. If you did it on your calculator using the exponent, you'd get 0.25, which is also 1 fourth. You could leave your answer as 0.25 as well. Now let's go ahead and substitute this value of b in so that I can solve for a. And again, it doesn't matter which equation I use. So now that I have found b, I want to find my a value as well. So I'm going to use the top equation, 128 is equal to a times 1 fourth to the negative 2. So this gives me 128 is equal to a. Remember when I've got a negative exponent, that means take the reciprocal of the base and change the exponent to positive. So this is 128 is equal to 16a. Divide both sides by 16. So a is equal to 8. Go back and make your equation. So my equation for this one is y is equal to 8 times 1 fourth to the x power. Looking at this, I can easily tell that b is less than 1. So that tells me that I have exponential decay for this exponential function. And remember when we first looked at this graph, that makes sense that I've got exponential decay because as my x increases, my y decreases. This last exercise shows us a very interesting application problem. A bacterial colony is growing at an exponential rate. You'll notice that it says that it's growing, so that should represent exponential growth. It is known that after four hours, its population is 98 bacteria. So I'm going to write that as an ordered pair. My input is four, my output 98 bacteria. After nine hours, I see that I have 189 bacteria. Now we're definitely going to need our graphing calculator for this one because the numbers just don't turn out as nice as the previous examples. So I want to find the exponential equation. And again, remember, in the problem, we were told that we had an exponential rate. So um, the question actually asks us for what the percent rate of growth is. So that tells me that I really need to find my growth rate, my B value. So setting up my equation, I'm going to take the larger one first. So 189 is equal to A times B to the ninth power. And the second one, 98, is equal to a times b to the fourth. And my goal is to solve for that b. So divide both sides. So 189 divided by 98 does not give me a clean number. 1.928571429 are the digits that my calculator gave me. a divided by a gave me a 1 b to the ninth divided by b to the fourth is b to the fifth. Now I would be tempted to store this value in my graphing calculator. So once I did the division, I just pressed the store key and then I picked a letter of the alphabet. It doesn't matter what alphabet you or what letter you use because right now this answer stands for b to the fifth. Now to find the value of b, I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal exponent, so raise to the one-fifth power. So if you've stored that value, all you need to do is write down whatever variable you used and raise it to the one-fifth power. When I do that, I got that b was equal to 1.1403735. Again, not a nice number. 
But if we want to know what my percent rate of growth is, I really just need to look at the amount that the value of b is above 1. So because it's exponential growth, I just say how much above 1 is it? Since it's 0.14 above 1, that tells me that my percent growth is 14%. Think back to 7th grade when you did decimals and percents, and 0.14 is equivalent to a 14% growth rate. We're going to be talking much more about these growth rate problems when we move to our application problems in exponential growth and decay. For right now, it's important that we can solve for the a and the b to find an equation that is an exponential equation. We'll practice a lot more with these in class, but please go back and make sure you understand the process that we did. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.